Last week we talked about a bunch of garden problems and this week we're continuing that series. We're gonna look at a whole bunch more. This is an aster, one of those beautiful perennial purple asters that grows in garden. This one's purple dome, very popular variety. And this brown business down at the bottom is caused by a fungus called botrytis, gray mold. Botrytis occurs everywhere in the landscape. You cannot avoid it. Asters get botrytis on their lower parts for whatever reason, like clockwork. The top of the plant will still look great. With asters, I just tend to plant something in, in front of the ankles or so-called of the plant so that you just don't see this part because this just gets this way over the course of the summer. Easier just to disguise it than go spraying chemicals all the time. Botrytis, by the way, is what makes geranium flowers mold when, you, when the, uh, the petals get a little old. It's what makes those weird blotches on peony leaves. Same exact thing. Uh, it's a widespread fungus. Here's another thing that people see all the time. If you've got hydrangea, big, big mop head hydrangeas, hydrangea macrophylla, it's rare that you don't get this kind of leaf spot over the summer, especially if you've got overhead irrigation or if there's rain with splashing around and stuff, heavy rains. This is called Circospora leaf spot. And although it can be disfiguring and people go, ew, that looks terrible, it actually doesn't really hurt the plant. It is more of a cosmetic issue than it is an actual affecting the health of the plant issue. If you really hate it, pick off the affected leaves. They tend to be the older leaves down in, inside and the newer leaves tend to be okay. If, if you can stand to live with it, leave it alone. One good thing you can do though is at the end of the season, and this is true with any garden disease, clean up leaf litter. Don't leave these old leaves that fall off the plant at the end of the season down around the base of the plant. They'll just reinfect the, the leaves next year. Clean up really helps. Here's another disease that is really getting quite common. This is a relatively new one to Tennessee, but is I think the last 10 years or so. This is daylily rust. Those are sporing, uh, bodies of spores, that's it, reproducing. This is another disease that basically looks crummy. Don't worry about it, really won't hurt your plant. This is daylily leaf miner, and I believe it just made it over to this country from somewhere else. Asia or Europe is usually where those things come from. And I'm not sure what to say about how badly this hurts plants because it's so new, we don't know. I can say of the, of the patch that I watched last year, it didn't seem to have that great of an effect. I think it's more unsightly than anything else, but it bears watching. These oddball looking things are actually cone flowers, purple cone flowers. Uh, and you may have seen something that looks like this in your garden. You come out expecting this beautiful magenta daisy and instead you get this oddball green thing and this odd cluster of something that doesn't quite know what it is, flower, leaf, something else. This is caused by a disease called aster yellows. And it's one of those sort of pseudovirus type diseases that lives in the plasma of the plant, in other words, the juice. And it messes up what the plant, the expression of the plant, it'll totally goof up flowers, as you can see, that's the most common thing that you see. Once a plant has this, it doesn't go back to blooming well, and yeah, there's no cure. The thing to do, though, is to rogue it out. Just take out the affected plant. Often, you'll, it won't, the plants nearby will be fine. This is spread by a leaf hopper. Those, uh, there are plenty of them out in, about in the garden. It's very difficult to control leaf hoppers in my experience. You could try, I guess, with a seven or some other pesticide, but, but better just to, as soon as you see this kind of action starting on your cone flowers, just pull them out, replace them. This doesn't live in the soil, it only lives in the plant. So you're okay with that. Now I wanted to show a couple of things that are not diseases, but look like it. This is just flat out heat stress. This is a Japanese maple. We had a incredibly hot and incredibly dry June. And this is the result. This plant was taken care of, but it just couldn't quite manage it. It will come back, but it's gonna look kind of toasty until next year when it reliefs out. Same thing with this dogwood. This is heat stress, not a disease. The first thing plants will do is sacrifice the leaves furthest away from the core of the plant, or the tips of the leaves in this case. And so you can see how both of these plants are doing this. If you see this in your landscape, don't assume it's a disease, a fungus. Don't assume it's necessarily a, uh, a, some kind of insect or pr a problem. A lot of times it's just environmental stress. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is not, it's a, 
it's the biggest pest of all, and that is voles. And when I say voles, I'm saying voles with a V, not moles with an M. It is a little meadow mouse kind of job, not a mole that eats earthworms and Japanese beetle grubs. And we have had a huge number of moles in Middle Tennessee because of the cicada boom last year, and they eat the, the cicadas as they come up to the soil surface. So there was a po mole population explosion. Thing is that moles make little tunnels. As we all know, the voles use the mole tunnels to get around. Voles eat plant roots. They're the bad guys. And they will eat a huge variety of plants. And it seems like every year they're trying something they never tried before. Hostas are a favorite. I've seen a hosta sitting on the ground and then just disappear like it was sucked down in a hole. It was by a vole pulling on its roots and just taking the whole thing out. I've seen knockout roses almost cut through at the, just below the soil line where the voles have eaten through the main roots of the thing. It's not uncommon at all. So what do you do about it? Well, you can plant smart. There's a product called vole block. This is also called permatill because it imp improves the tilt of the soil. We use this a lot when we're planting things that need really good drainage. But this voles hate digging through rocks. They only, they don't like, and these have little sharpish edges, won't hurt you, but they don't like to dig, dig through this stuff. So dig a hole, if you're planting a plant that you think they like, for example, hostas, roses, uh, dig the hole wide, put some of this in the bottom, put some of this in the soil that's gonna go around the plant, and then plant the plant in and fill in with this mixed with some of the, some of the soil. You're basically, you're making a little container of this stuff around the roots of the plant and it really does protect them. I've seen beautiful roses. Last year, we saved some roses that were positively flopping on the top of the soil. They had so little stem left at the soil line from the voles. Replanted them with, with permatil, and they look gorgeous this year. And this is a brand new other solution for voles. Volgard, somebody got smart, and they're making baskets. All you do is dig the hole, put this in, plant the plant in the basket, and fill it in. Now, for years, people have been sort of making their own baskets with hardware cloth or anything, and this just takes all of the labor away from that. This comes in various sizes. This would be good for, say, a gallon plant or two-gallon plant, but they come all the way up to pretty good sizes for larger container sized plants. Both of these will work. There's no way that a vole is going to get through this. It seems to be pretty sturdily made, and it's dipped. It's uh, it's uh, not raw metal, it's gonna last, it's not gonna rot out or, or in the soil. So that's another good plan. Voles are definitely on the increase. There seems to be more and more every year, so either one of these are a really good solution for that. So I hope you found some of these tips really helpful, and if there's anything more that you'd like to hear about, just let us know on Volunteer Gardener, we'd love to help.